If you'd like to create beautiful watercolor paintings, it's important to understand the exact stages and their order when working with this fluid and at times hard to control medium. Many watercolor tutorials don't focus on this important topic, which can lead students to many problems in their paintings, especially with a material like watercolor. It is a highly transparent and pretty much impossible to paint over medium. Hi, I'm Leila. Welcome to my studio. If you are a beginner, already have some experience with watercolor, you are probably stumbling over some tricky situations like not knowing where to start or how to choose appropriate colors, having hard time controlling the paint, stopping it from pulling and adding appropriate finishing details that will make your painting stand out but not smother it. So watch this video till the end to get the full in-depth knowledge and understanding of this wonderful medium and become a better artist. Your first step starts even before you start painting. The success of your painting is determined by the choice of your paper. If you are planning to work in layers and use quite a bit of water, make sure to use cold press watercolor paper. So when the paint is applied, it actually gets absorbed into the paper, which makes it less colorful, but much more stable and makes it easier for you to apply other layers over it. If on the other hand, intense color and fine crisp detail is what you are after, go for hot press smooth watercolor paper. Hot press, on the other hand, creates a much smoother uh, surface with sealed pores so most of the paint that you will apply will stay sitting on the surface which will create brighter vivid colors and better control when it comes to using small brush for tiny little details. If you'd like to find out more on cold versus hot press paper visit my Patreon page where I have a detailed side-by-side -side demonstration and comparison. Along with many other useful video tutorials, we also do giveaways, games and other fun things. Another important point is to choose a suitable image or a subject matter. Leave dark colored, fully submerged in shadow subject matters to oils and acrylics. Watercolor loves light-filled subjects. Both bright and monochrome will work well. Watercolor is translucent and luminous, so play up its strengths rather than battle with thick layers, which it's not really designed for and will end up looking patchy and immature. Learning and experimentation is the key uh, to achieving better results, which brings me to this video's sponsor. Thank you Southern New Hampshire University for sponsoring this video. I know many of you watch my videos to learn, but art is the only thing I can help you with really. So if you feel that there is a lack of experience in other fields that may be holding you back in life or your career, you might like to check out SNHU's website. They offer a large variety of courses from game development, where you can learn to create realistic, dynamic gameplay experiences, 2D and 3D graphics and interface design, computer programming languages, 3D modeling and texturing within game art software to graphic design. They also offer courses in finance, data analytics, healthcare and so much more. So go to snhu.edu slash ataya, clickable link available in the description under this video to see what the current average annual salary for the courses are and you can request free information about the programs. Create an appropriate sketch before you start painting. You can even create a preliminary study on a separate piece of paper or your sketchbook. 
paying attention to shadow and light can really help when approaching a new subject matter, as you will know exactly where the main shadows and highlights will be situated. Don't think of it as a waste of time. It's a warm-up before the main event. And now it's time to sketch. It shouldn't be too hard because you are already familiar with the subject. Make sure that you are using soft feathery lines to make it easier for erasing if you need to do so. Next step is water. Moisten the paper. You can use a large brush, sponge or even a cloth. Do it even if you are not planning to create water-filled washes. Wait for a few minutes for the paper to absorb the water and start painting. It will improve the smoothness and help with paint application. It will also allow you more time to play with the paint on the surface of the paper, minimizing patchiness and irregularities. Next step is actually choosing the colors to start with. And I would suggest to start working with the lightest colors. Remember, watercolor is very translucent, so it's easier to apply another dark layer over the light compared to making a darker color lighter. I find that many of my students who are used to working with acrylics or oils find it the most difficult part of watercolor painting. As a rule, try using cooler colors for shadows and background and warmer colors for foreground and sunlit spots. Also, this is a good time to reserve some areas, either by just avoiding placement of paint on them or using a watercolor masking medium, something like this. Remember, watercolor has a tendency to dry much lighter, so keep that in mind when applying layers of your paint. Now we've come to the main body of your painting, so listen closely. This is a very important point and unique to watercolor. If you want to create color merges, make sure to do it quickly while the paint is wet. If you add more moisture into a drying area, you will create a cauliflower or blooming effect. In some situations it can be useful, but if it happens on a large open area like for example sky uh, it can really leave you frustrated with your artwork so remember to be quick when working uh, within one layer if you've missed your window of opportunity it's better to leave your watercolor to completely dry and add other nuances in a separate layer for this, you need to leave it to dry for a few hours, or you can always use a hair dryer. Just uh, remember to use the hair dryer when the work is touch dry, so that you do not move puddles of paint around with a strong airflow. While creating your layers or working wet on wet, use correct additives like granulation medium, salt or masking fluid. I have some really interesting in-depth videos on those techniques here on YouTube, so make sure to check them out after this video.
when working on the second layer but requiring a certain area to be quite damp make sure to re-wet the paper like I'm doing it here now and then you can play with that area just like you did the first time around here I'm going to apply some salt to create extra texture you can see the beautiful effect that the salt is helping me to create and because the previous layer of mainly just blue and with a bit of red was already dry the only paint that really does move around is the next layer that I've applied so that way you get the exposure of the color underneath with this really beautiful multicolored effect all thanks to the wonderful table salt same thing right here Completely drying between the layers will also help you to create really beautiful crisp details in the next layer. So that way you can avoid any kind of spills or runs into the areas that where you don't want your paint to run into. Scrape off all the salt if that's what you were using. but only after your paint is completely dry. And now your artwork is ready for another layer of paint. When it's time to go over the final layer and bring out all the details that you want to bring out, there are a few tips that I'd like to give you. First of all, make sure you use the right size brush for the right job. So go for smaller brushes if you're working on smaller details. Another important thing is to not go around and outline every single thing because that is the surest way to get everything looking as flat and as cartoony as possible. Again, if this is what you're going for, great. But if you're going for a realistic effect, it can be a little bit problematic. So the idea is to bring out details only in certain areas. And these areas can be foreground and areas of high attention so areas that you want the viewer to look at these are the parts that on the painting that you need to focus on this is a good time to use quite dark or contrasty colors um, and paint that is a little bit denser still watery because it is watercolor but just a little bit denser And now that it's all dry, we can bring out the final details with dark colors and white gouache. Make sure that you have your tiny little brush with a good point, otherwise it will be a struggle. And now to sum up details and finishing touches, use smaller brushes, never outline any objects if are working in a realistic manner. Don't add details throughout the whole painting, focus on the focal point of your composition or foreground, otherwise your painting can look flat. Having said that, if you are working in a style that calls for it, like manga or for painting, this rule would not apply. This is also a good time when you can use other materials like watercolor pencils or white gouache or pen to add some more highlights. We'll fix up some areas where you went too dark in the previous layers. And, he, and here you can bring in watercolor pastels, watercolor pencils, and add 
extra texture if you'd like to you don't have to this is completely optional you can just use pure watercolor but sometimes I find it can be quite interesting to add just a little bit of something else So now, knowing all this, you can start painting like a pro. Thanks to SNHU for sponsoring this video. And thanks so much to my wonderful patrons. Couldn't do it without you guys. Let me know in the comments how you go and what else you'd like to learn about. Don't forget to subscribe and watch this next video that dives deep into granulation techniques and staining in watercolor. This video can also help you create your next masterpiece. Thanks for watching. And I hope you have a lovely day full of inspiration. Thanks for painting with me, guys.